Welcome to video number three in our series on air sealing and insulation. Again, thank you to Matt Reisinger and The Build Show for allowing us to film this during their filming of Insulation 2.0. Hopefully you've seen video number one on setting up the blower door and getting ready to test and also video number two on using infrared to find air leakage in a home. This is video number three on removing insulation and I know you're going to enjoy this one because we still get to use cool tools. Speaking of the machine we're going to be using to do this, that is the DV18 or Defender Vacuum 18, 18 horsepower. In the past we've sold a lot of vacuums over the years, but those vacuums needed another device to protect the blade inside the vacuum. There's all kinds of debris in an attic that you can suck up. I like to call it attic candy, especially the little round discs that are the knockouts from those metal electrical boxes electricians used to use all the time. There's those, there's plumbing elbows, there's all kinds of debris in an attic. So when that gets sucked up and it puts holes through the blade on your vacuum, you lose its ability to suck. You wind up buying a new vacuum, or in some cases, you know, people will replace that blade. That blade's like $450 at the time of this video plus the hours to replace it. Not only are blades expensive, people are expensive. One of the gentlemen that was our inspiration for attaching the Defender right to the vacuum, he bought a vacuum and a Defender, and as he's walking up to the job site, he could see the Defender over in the truck, and he's walking up towards the vacuum, gets hit in the side of the head with an eight or 16 penny nail. Take a look at the picture. What if that had hit straight on? What if it would have hit his customer? So we don't want to do things like that. That's why it's attached directly to it. Now, do not bid an attic without going and seeing it first. You never know what you're going to find in an attic. Birds nests, wasps, raccoons, poison. That's the kind of stuff you, you may see an attic with so much in it, you don't even want to bid the job because the cleanup's going to cost too much. Now, back to protecting people. We've got to have the proper PPE. Cover all your skin. Wear a mask that gives you good respiratory protection. Quincy's wearing a full face mask. I like that because it covers your eyes. Steven's wearing a half mask with goggles. Either way, make sure you protect yourself. When you get up into the attic, be careful as you're walking across the joists. You don't want to fall through. Sometimes you can fall through the ceiling. You can't even see the joist. You're dragging a hose, you're wearing a mask, but then as you get up in there, you also want to watch out for your head. There's nails coming through the roof and things like that that can rake across you. Just be careful. That's the main thing. So now let's get into the attic. Let's take a look at some of the production rates. Here you can see Quincy using the hose to break up the insulation. Some people use just the hose. I love what these guys from True R Value did. They took the PVC, cut it at a 30 degree angle, and they're using that to get all the way over into the edge so that they can get that insulation out of there and make it really clean over there by the soffit. But when you notice that your production slows down, or maybe even stops, you might still hear the vacuum going, but you need to go outside and take a look at, one, the vacuum, make sure it's still getting good air and it can breathe, but also check the bag. The bag, more than likely, is full. That's generally what's going to happen at this point. If the bag's full, turn off the vacuum, put a new bag on, make sure it's good and tight, go back inside, and get back to production. Ken and Matt here at the build show. Oh, baby. Look at that, Ken. Got to show you around. some progress. That, Old nasty stuff coming out. That is a lot of insulation. Let's get some more tips on vacuums and vacuuming out the attic. 
First thing I want to cover, it's good to have someone stationed outside making sure nothing goes awry with your bag. Sometimes these bags can get full, slip off of a pile, and when you look at these bags, let's look at the standard bag. This bag's been used for years, but they're kind of thin, you can tell that, and when they get full, they get very heavy. They can tear. You can see here, I've been playing with this one, but they're not that hard to tear. This kind of bag's great as long as it's already in your trailer. I tend to like a bag that is like the material they make sandbags out of or feed bags. This one, you're not going to punch through this one, so it's not going to tear. I can fill this completely full and I'm not going to have a problem before I get to the dump and get rid of the bag. So let's go ahead and hear from Steven, the contractor, of some of his experience with the vacuum and on the job site. Ken Allison with IDI, I'm here with Steven from True R Value, correct? Yes. Here in Austin, Texas. Just wanted to talk a little bit about the Defender. You got this how long ago? Uh, about six months ago. How many jobs have you done with it? Uh, five or so. What do you think so far? Uh, it's great. It's uh, lighter than our old one and more features. So. so now this one, what makes this different obviously is the Defender is built into this vacuum. So far we've pulled out, what, about 10 of these maybe? Yeah. Mud dauber nests. So these are wasp nests out there. They're kind of like a rock. We've done 520 square feet out of 840 in this particular attic. Put, what, an hour and a half on the vacuum? Yeah. So we're running about 300 square foot an hour. Uh, you said that's a little faster yeah, than normal? Yeah, that, that's faster, much faster than normal. It, it's a bit of an easier attic to move around in, and uh, the material's a little yeah, nice square box, yes. and you're not hitting your head yet. Mm -hmm. So in Arizona, we got about 200 square foot an hour, so this is about 100 square foot an hour fast the job that we're doing today. You did mention you'd like to see the ends that spin a little bit. Well, yeah, it's uh, moving the hose around is still the hardest thing about the job, uh, trying to get through trusses, things like that. So big shout out to Steven and the guys from True R Value. Shout out to Matt and the crew. But how about that production rate? 300 square feet an hour. You're usually gonna have a little more compacted insulation and things. This was a great job. Like I said, the job we did in Arizona, 230 square feet an hour was a lot more realistic. Another thing, make sure you take care of your vacuum. Always use the correct startup procedure, shutdown procedure, get it on a maintenance schedule and maintain the thing. Change the oil, clean out the air filter. Motors need a lot of air. Give yours the air it needs and add vacuuming to the jobs that you do. Nobody wants to do this job and they're usually happy to pay you to do it instead of the homeowner doing it. It's great and there's no better way to air seal a project than to have nothing in your way, air seal it, and then blow new insulation back in. That brings up the next videos. If you like this video, like and share it. Please, we want everyone to be more profitable and to be able to do this and do it well. Next video in the series is that air sealing video. And then we'll finish up the series with blowing the insulation back in. If you've got questions on the vacuum, on the PPE, or anything in any of these videos, reach out to your local branch manager at IDI, reach out to us at corporate. We are here to help you and we're glad to do it. Our goal is to earn your business every day by making you more profitable. We look forward to seeing you on the next video.